Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Joanne Flynn Black, and I'm here with Sarah Cordner, and we're here to talk about the differences between uh, platforms for, for courses. Um, I'm coming at it from a Mighty Networks perspective, because that's what I'm currently using, and um, Sarah will be looking at it more from a Thinkific perspective, because that's the platform that, that she currently does all her amazing courses on. And we're going to just go kind of side by side and, and see, you know, the differences of, of, uh, of the different platforms and, and what works uh, for each one. Love it. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Cordner and uh, Joanne, it's been so awesome to connect with you behind the scenes. I know that you support a very large network of women who are going out and creating all kinds of programs, coaching programs, co their consultants, you know, the whole sphere in all different industries. And um, so, yeah, we've had a been, have been having a chat behind the scenes. How can we, with our different areas of expertise and different kinds of platforms that coaches, consultants, authors, experts, speakers, you name it, can be using to get their message out to the world and to to help their audiences. Um, so I'm a qualified course creation specialist. I've been working in the course creation space for over 14 years. Um, I'm postgraduate in education design, curriculum development, um, and hold the record for being one of Australia's, well, I think Australia's youngest university director in history. Um, and I really, really love to um, you know, help people take what's in their head and, and construct that into a profitable online course. Um, so I came across um, a number of different platforms many years ago. I've been working in this space for a long time. They've dramatically changed over the years. I think, you know, about sort of 10 years ago, the, the real learning platforms that were out there were really, really expensive ones that mostly universities and large educational institutions use. And we're talking like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month type expensive. <laughs> um, and as kind of the online world sort of started to spill into the commercial sector or the public sector, um, a lot of these new uh, startup companies, um, SaaS companies, started to develop solutions that the everyday person can use. You do not have to be techie. You do not have to have special tech skills whatsoever and at the same time made them really really affordable as well as user-friendly so I remember when I first started out Joanne like I like everyone does in this space you know you're like I know I want to go online I know I want to share some stuff online but where and how do I know where to put my stuff to share my message to communicate with my audience to sell my products and services and then when you start doing this like Google searching and posting the questions in Facebook groups like you just get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments where everyone is saying this one's better than this one that one's rubbish go with this one choose this one and it very quickly becomes extremely overwhelming <laughs> so you probably know that yourself um i ended up doing um quite a massive comparison of the ones that were around at the time um, that I kind of really pushed my public online presence because I was working very much in the corporate space previously. Um, and at the time, there were some major ones that are still on the market today. So I sort of did this big um, exploration into Thinkific, Teachable, which back then was called Fedora. Um, uh, you know, then Kajabi came along, then Zenda came along, and sort of all these other ones started popping up. So I kind of did this comparison where I was like, do they have this, you know, and did this big, huge, massive Excel sheet, like trying to list all the features and functions and like try to do that comparison table where you tick which ones have which. Oh my God, they all changed so fast. I was having to update that document every week and I started to lose my mind. And what I very quickly found is that there is no such thing as one platform being better than another. Mm -hmm. And the, Joanne, you and I have had, been having this chat behind the scenes, hey, it's, there is no platform that is better. They are all completely different. And that is basically the summary that we can only give you today. Everyone's business is different. Everyone's audience is different. Everyone's offerings are different. The way people want to engage and communicate with their audience are completely different. And therefore, you know, Joanne and I wanted to jump on today to have a chat. We're going to do some screen sharing and show you two particular platforms that we both love um, that just simply show you that they are different to show you how they're different so that you can kind of know what you're looking for and start to get a bit more of a better idea as to what you might need for your particular business. So I think that's how we want to frame today, right, Joanne? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, tell us a bit about you because I know that a lot of people listening don't know who you are and what you do as well. Sure. Um, so I'm Joanne Flynn Black and I'm the founder of a company called Launch Before. And the idea is that we should all launch before we feel completely ready, launch before everything feels 100% perfect, and launch when you're 
feeling a little bit before you're feeling completely comfortable because I know I was the one out there, you know, uh, re same thing, researching the course platforms, trying to get out there. And I spent a very long time in this like analysis paralysis of which platform, which, which screen cam, which light, which mic. And, and you know what? I never launched. <laughs> uh, everyone can relate to that I think at the beginning <laughs> I know and then I I um I found Mighty Networks and I realized that th this was the one for me that worked for me and I launched in literally like four weeks so I want to then kind of spread the word uh, for you know other people that you know, like, just put yourself out there. Like, you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. So. Love it. And I, I honestly, too, can so I, I really agree with that sentiment as well. You know, I think we, we can all become so paralyzed by our fear of, is it perfect? I, I, my, one of my biggest things I say to people is, like, you have to get version one out there. You have to get version one. You have to get some beta testers or some friends or a couple of real students through it to kind of work out the kinks. Uh, you know, they're going to ask questions you might not have even thought of answering in there. You know, and th th those first kind of trial runs, as imperfect and terrifying as it might feel, um, is actually what helps the product, you know, improve and iterate and evolve into, you know, whatever it is that the market needs right now. Um, yeah, so I really agree with you. Like, we've just got to kind of be brave. <laughs> and I, I always think you know cnn isn't going to be filming your launch you know <laughs> when you go out there like put it on the news the link was broken or you missed that answer to that question we, we've just got to remember that if we keep our information our knowledge in here it can't help anyone it's not going to make us any money and it's not going to change anybody's life you know that we we just have to take that first deep breath and, and launch it so um you've obviously chosen mighty networks for your particular business um, and a couple of my clients in the past have worked on that platform too. So I've, I've been in there and I've helped clients um, upload the curriculums that I've developed with them into those platforms. But it's not a platform that I know very, very well. So I'm so excited to, today, Joanne, because I know that you're going to show us a screen demo of some of the functions and features that Mighty Networks has. Some of the things that people watching today might go, oh my gosh, that is exactly the solution I'm looking for. <laughs> like, thank you, Joanne. <laughs> um, and then we're going to also look at today, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you um, behind the scenes, the dashboard of the platform learning management system called Thinkific, um, which is a, is a very different type of platform and will probably work for um, different types of businesses who might choose Mighty Networks. So with that frame in mind, we want you guys to look today to simply kind of compare different features. What will work for you, what do you need, and of course make your own decision from some of the things that we're going to share with you today. So um, Joanne, what, what can you tell us about Mighty Networks? What is it? Who do you find that it works really well for? And then can you give us some sneaky peeks behind the scenes there? Yeah, absolutely. I have, um, I'll talk a little bit about it, and then I, I have two courses uh, that uh, were developed on Mighty Networks that I've been involved in in both of them and I'll, I'll show you that um, so uh, you know the thing about mighty networks which is different than some of the other platforms is that they started as a community so it was really for building uh, communities and then on top of that they layered the courses so mm -hmm different than some of the other platforms I think are, are more learning platforms and then they, they've added on community. Um, and uh, for me, the reason why I picked it was um, I really wanted the community feature. I, I was actually in the Thinkific you know, um, platform working on my course and the idea was I was gonna go over to Mighty Networks use their community along with Thinkific. And then when I got to Mighty Networks, um, uh, I said, wait, I could just build the course here too and it will be integrated and I wouldn't need to have like a separate Facebook group or some other way to, to keep the members. So that was, to me, that was the selling point. Um, we'll, we'll see in this demo, like there are certain things that are, maybe they don't have as good as um, Thinkific has, Thinkific has, but 
to me, the, like the top priority was the community. So that's why. Yeah. I and it, that's really interesting because yeah, I think it's really important before a course creator goes out and, you know, commits to a particular type of software is why do you need it? Why do you want it? What is it that you're trying to create in terms of that learning experience or that, you know, de personal development experience? Um, you know, for you, I mean, I mean, for, for the type of business and the type of work that you do, the products and services that you offer, just for those people listening, why for you was the community more of a higher priority than the learning experience? I mean, obviously, the, not the learning, the learning management system structure. I mean, because you you were kind of you looked at that and went, I need community for my business, and that's got to be the strongest element of the software I choose. Like, just to, so that other people, there's lots of people, different types of businesses. What what why was that for you? Yeah, for me, um, I didn't want um, my course to just be someone watching and not feeling a connection with other people. Like I wanted them to feel this connection that they're doing the course with a group, can communicate with the group, get feedback, you know, what's working. Um, it just, it just for me felt like that was where the transformation was would come in more than you know watching just you know kind of watching on their own so mm. that was you know part of why it was you know so important to me yeah and that you know and there's a huge amount of research and studies out there that prove when you add a component of social learning to your um, online programs um the engagement rate and the transformation rate and the completion rates um do dramatically increase and there is genuine scientific research behind that so you know, certainly if you can incorporate some form of social learning community um you you know you are inc literally increasing the um the learning experience of the program so i think it's a really really important thing to consider for people and it and again, you know, when you when people listening who, who are thinking about what kind of experience do I want to create, you know, what we're not saying here is that a self study program is wrong. Um, nor is it bad. You know, some people, that's their business model. They have other products and services. They have other programs that, that they offer. Um, you know, having a complete self-study program where it is just videos, that completely suits a massive section of the learning community. You know, some people buy courses and they're just like, just give me the information, give me the answers to the questions and leave me alone. Like they don't, they don't want to get involved in all of that stuff. Um, and so I also want to reinforce that a, a, an online course isn't wrong if it doesn't have that in there. If you do not have the time, the resources, the capacity, or the inclination or desire, some people just don't like that stuff, to manage and run a social learning community, then don't do it. You know, it's to, to make your business something that you don't enjoy and it's you're going to offer something that you actually then can't fulfill um, is also not going to be a great learning experience. So I recommend for the people who just don't like people very much, which is totally OK. <laughs> um, don't don't think that you have to do that if you want to um, be a successful online course creator as well. But for those people, you know, it's their passion to create that community you know, for them. It is everything. It's who they are. It's their style um, and they they prefer to work in that environment so that's that's who you are Joanne you are you're someone who gives a lot of your personal time and connection and, and love and care to your customers and clients and students um can we have a little look I'm excited <laughs> let's see how you this is good we're going to see now how, how Joanne's using communities to really enhance the learning experience of her programs yes let me share my screen um okay so this is uh someone i worked with her name is gina sorbonne and she created a course called color the chakras in uh in mighty networks and um i'm going to click here on course material so if you see here uh hold on let me expand that and so uh, for the people watching now, um, what we're seeing on the screen right now is the student's view of the program. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. And afterwards, I could show you the instructor view from the course that I created. But I will say that the Gina's course and the other course I'm going to show you are super beautiful. So I'm showing you them first. <laughs> um, so, you know, here's a here's an area that, you know, she put in an overview. And then um, you can see here, um, 
she has the course in seven different weeks or parts and each part the way she did it was um every week was a different chakra and uh every week was live with her participants and then in that um she would have here different things like a meditation, which was an audio, and then um, something for, you know, with uh, a picture, and then uh, other, other pictures, and then some text. Uh, and she also, in some of these, she has videos uh, as well. So you can upload, you know, words, presentations, videos, photos, um, you know, everything. The student can mark it as complete when they're done um, uh, as well. So the, the nice thing also about this is um, this course is, um, has its own what they call activity feed. So after the lesson, let's say this happened to me, um, which it did, I'm, I might have uh, ran out of time in teaching a certain lesson and I didn't have a chance to mention a certain feature of what I was teaching and I wasn't stressed out about it. I wasn't like, oh, I can't believe I didn't do that in my, you know, in my lesson. All I did was then put it in the activity feed and, and it looked to everyone like I was adding a special bonus. So it was a, just a nice, um, a nice thing. So here's, uh, you know, here's an activity feed that only the people in the course can see, and you can post questions, you could post polls, pictures, articles, videos, you know, every everything you'd want to see. So very much, you know, like the same kind of feeling as you get in a Facebook group as such. You know, you can you can do all the same kind of stuff in there as you could do in a group. Yeah, right. exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And, and can you just show uh, for those who are watching from the instructors dashboard side, um, you know, how sort of flexible, adaptable it is, how easy it is to actually upload some course content. So if we were going to create a course and a community to go with it here in Mighty Networks, um, what, how would people go about that? Is it hard? Is it scary and complicated? Or can you show us that it's quite easy? Okay, yeah, good, good point. So this is, um, this is, this was my course. Um, creating uh, an action board from your vision, right? So we, have, we all have these visions of things we want to do. This was five weeks to get it done and, and create what you wanted to do. So this is the instructor view. And um, let, me, let me say we would add a, um, a lesson. I'll show you what that's like. Um, so here, I just clicked here, add a lesson. I'm gonna edit it. Uh, let's, let's just call it here, Sarah. Um, you know, I can, I can, I can write. I can upload a photo, a video, a link. Um, you know, anything right here. Mm -hmm. um, Simple, like adding an attachment to an email, just like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Super yeah. easy. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Like, let me show you something I, let's see here. So this was, um, this was like week three of, of my course. And mm -hmm. I, here's where I put in some tips on, we were using Trello. It's a uh, platform mm -hmm. um, uh, with, uh, you know, I posted pictures and cards and, um, you know, I could have put a video in there. So it's just very um, simple almost to add what you need. Um, and then here is where, you know, you, you can just put what your overview is um, mm. and you can add as many lessons or sections as you want. And then with that comes automatically, you know, you don't have to do anything, but here's this activity feed shows your members, shows um, different events. Actually, let me show you that. So, because this was in the past, um, what I did was um, there's a really neat um, integration with Zoom and mm -hmm. uh, other, uh, other platforms. So here you can see I have all the weeks. Um, you know, I did a, 
we were calling it caffeinate and collaborate and and then we had office hours and so people could just click on here and join and now um, you know at and, and i think this is a big question that people ask you know some of your course content will be pre-prepared pre-recorded and uploaded there for your students to go in and consume um but then you know a lot of course creators or people thinking about starting out will always ask is there the opportunity um or the feature or function to be able to then provide that live element of training if you're doing group coaching or live calls um, this is really cool here. So you're underneath your event section in the Mighty Networks, you've got this option to literally connect and integrate your own Zoom channel and be able to um, provide those. Do, does the Zoom call actually show up inside the student's dashboard or is this just the like the link to the calendar event that takes them to the Zoom room? Um, it shows up like it, let's say it's live. It's happening now. You'll see a little yeah. icon that says live and mm -hmm. then click on it and click the link and it it takes them to zoom straight to the zoom room okay awesome very good i love another question that i get asked a lot by people who are out there compa comparing platforms is um the communication with students element um how does that work with mighty networks is there is there features and functions like um, other than the community section here so for instance as the instructor Mm -hmm. um, if you were going to send us all a message, do you do that via some kind of separate email notification, email marketing software, or do you literally just stick that to within, does, does uh, Mighty Networks only have that within the kind of the community posting feature? And would it notify them by email or anything, or do they have to be logged in to see it? Um, yep, there's, there's a way here um, that you can click and... Um, add a chat mm -hmm. and I, I will say this is one thing that is a limitation. Uh, it's something they are working on. Um, group chat, uh, mm -hmm. you can chat with all of your community or, or one member of your community. But if oh. you wanna, like just say, I only wanna chat with these five people, that is uh, on the roadmap item for, for my name networks. A lot of people yeah. have. Does it integrate with an email marketing software? So if I already had one, um, you know, what's, does it integrate directly? So it, it would have that automatic um, integration? Um, they do have integrations with Zapier. Yeah. So um, you can zap to, you know, Flowdesk or, you know, any of the other email marketing. Yeah places so cool so simple integration through zapier to your own email marketing software very interesting i like I, I, you know it's it's certainly um you know the a lot of people say that the community the community feature and function of mighty networks is is quite a powerful one so that's really really interesting to see is there anything else you wanted to show us before we move on to our comparison software sure so um just about the communication um what you can what what you can do which is different than facebook you know how um facebook will uh only show certain members of your community certain posts and if you had to tag them to make sure everyone got it with with mighty networks i can i can create a post and then when i want to post it i can say notify and this will notify all course students of my post. So everyone in my course will get this notification. There's cool. no um, there's no filtering or anything of it. You yeah. control. You know. And would that notification come to them? You know, for instance, via the email that they registered their user account with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So it'd say you've got a new notification from Blur School or Blur Course. Exactly. Yep. I see. The other thing I, I wanted to say um, is they, um, which I feel is a really a big strength, especially in today's world with privacy. Um, Mighty Networks does, um, there's no ads, so you're not going to be bombarded with ads. Um, they're not, you know, checking out what you're putting in there and serving you up, you know, oh, wow, that's funny. I just, I just was Googling that and now it's in my ad. They're not doing anything like that. So it's, it's very secure. Like you could feel very secure within the community. I know that's a, a big selling point for, for some people. Yeah. Um, uh, so I feel like that's, that's, that's really good. Another thing just quickly is that you can have something called groups within Mighty Networks. So 
I have different groups like um, I have a group on uh, gratitude. Um, and so um, instead of maybe not everyone in my community wants to talk about gratitude all the time, every day. So I've, I asked, you know, hey, is anyone interested in, um, in gratitude? And a few people joined my gratitude group. And it's like every day I post about um, uh, from a book uh, called The Magic. Um, and it's about, um, it's about gratitude. And I just, I post. And then only those people in the group see that. So it's a nice feature. You can also charge um, specifically for uh, for gr for groups or or courses separately too. Wow. Okay, that's very good to know. Yeah, like it. And um, you know, I, I can see here from this site that the URL is sharewell.mn.co, uh, which obviously is a customized domain. So um, one of the questions I always get asked by people as well when they're looking at choosing a platform is, can I fully customize it? Can I completely brand it in my own branding? Can I make sure it's mydomain.com? Now it looks to me like you can here. Um, so I mean, obviously Mighty Networks allows all of those features and functions. Do you have to do any special coding to get your own branding on here or is it quite straightforward to do for people? So um, a couple things. So. Um, Right now, um, I'm within the might, they call it the Mighty Networks business plan. Um, they have three plans. Uh, do you want to talk about pricing or? Yeah, well, I think it's just great for people to kind of get some good ideas as to what sort of prices are at and stuff like that. Definitely. Um, so, um, there's and by the way, guys, we are recording this video in October 2020. <laughs> the pricing has nothing to do with Joanne and I. These, these prices are correct at the time of recording this video. All right. That's, that's good to, to add. Um, Little disclaimers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they do have a free plan, um, and it is, it, it, you, you can have it free forever, um, but it does have some limitations on what you can do. Um, add like for example there's no courses in the free plan what you what you can do though if you kind of want to work around it a little bit like you could you could even run a course right here on the main feed if if you wanted to be kind of crafty about that i, I i've seen people do that um then there's a one step up a community plan it's around 23 dollars a month us um, and then the business plan comes to around $90 um, US um, and you get discounts if you join annually and, you know, special promotions and such. But for me, um, kind of what uh, hooked me in was that, you know, $90 a month, you know, if I sell one course at $90 a month, I'd pay, right, so for my yeah. thing. So pay for itself. <laughs> it was definitely, it was definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, do you, and do you have um, an affiliate link or anything that people can click on so, to go through you to do a trial or anything, Joanne? I do, actually, yes. Yeah. Would you like to, do you know what it is off by heart or would you like to just put it in the comments of when this, when, when this post is published? I'll put it in the comments, yes. Yeah, cool. Let's so go check out the description, guys, if you'd like to give Joanne a little little kick back. Nobody gets charged extra for kicking, kick, kicking, kicking, clicking affiliate links. Um, but uh, obviously that will help Joanne if you click on hers for the Mighty Networks trial. Yeah, great. Cool. Uh, anything else you want to share about Mighty Networks then before we go and check out the Thinkific site? Um, I, I think... Uh, well, it's um, one thing I want to say. It's a, a woman-founded company. It's uh, Gina Bianchini from Silicon Valley in California of the USA. And uh, she's an amazing woman. She is just awesome to watch. And um, I learned, you know, the, the way I did my course where I, re I did it live and then recorded it, um, she, I was following the way she was doing her courses. So um, I, I think they have a fantastic community, really fantastic hosts who kind of jump in and help each other. Um, I'm, I'm a fan. 
Yeah, love it. I, I, I really love, by the way, that you just mentioned there that you, um, you know, your first courses came about by recording them live. I honestly believe that that is such a great way for new course creators to just get some content put together and created in the first place, because there can be this massive wall of procrastination that's caused by people thinking that they must create these perfectly filmed studio recorded and edited type videos to go into their online courses. And you don't. Um, in fact, I find that when people sort of start thinking about creating their videos, they think, oh my gosh, I've got to script it. I've got to read these scripts. I've got to get teleprompters. And people who are usually absolutely amazing Amazing at talking about their topic all of a sudden lose the ability to speak because <laughs> they feel like it's got to be like that and I would say to them like honestly if I was going to come to a live workshop with you whether it's online or in or in person you would not be reading from a script like you would just go with your flow you never read me the entire time if it was um, live online or offline um, so I, for anyone listening to this like Joanne's made a really good point there is sometimes it's easier to just put together a live workshop get some real people on there and just do your thing just let it flow press record and you now have an asset you now have something that you can go on and sell over and over again you know you could make it an automated webinar you could put it inside an online course you could get it transcribed and put it into workbooks and things like that um you know it doesn't have these things don't have to be perfect and i think covid as well has has almost really helped with this nuance that it doesn't have to be perfect anymore now i think it's a very normal aspect to um you know see these recorded um presentations to see these recorded workshops and people are actually uh, very okay with that now compared to what they would have been you know four or five years ago um so yeah really really nice thing to bring up there yeah and i'll, I'll just i'll just end with uh, this was another example of a course creator uh, mariah texador she did this uh, mastering the shot camera basics and um you know she she made beautiful worksheets in canva and and recorded the session and now she's going to offer it um uh, recorded um, so you don't have to come to a, um, a live class which works like you, we talked about before works for a lot of people um, mm -hmm. and also works for people's schedules um, yeah. for you know all different time zones and stuff but the great thing is what she can do is she can just duplicate this this um, course and have a whole new community and it's self it's almost like self-service plus you know mm -hmm. you can <laughs> you can watch and you can communicate with people and she's thinking about having like some live q and a's so um it's it's like you do it once live and and now you have a course so that's what you know uh between myself and gina and mariah we all did uh we did that it doesn't need to be so hard like this is great this is brilliant i love it all right um well that's look I find, obviously we can't show everything in a short call that we have available today but um i really hope people watching that have got a good idea as to some of the features and functions of mighty networks go check it out and click on the link in the comments if you would like to have joanne's affiliate link to pop in and, and check it out um now i'm going to share my screen with you guys and i'm going to take you into behind the scenes of a Thinkific platform. Um, now, Thinkific is a little bit different to Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks, as Joanne has said, is more of a community that has a learning management system function um, within it. Um, Thinkific is a learning management system. It is specifically a platform by which you buy, a, like you would buy, for instance, a WordPress website, it becomes your own piece of software that you can then completely customize and use to host and sell your online courses, manage your students, and so on. Now I've got a, a, a pretend dashboard account here um, for us to go and check out. So um, this is the behind the scenes. This is what you would see if you were the um, instructor of this or the owner of this particular program. Now, as you can see at the top, you can create your own site name um, as whatever you want it to be, .thinkific.com. Um, on the paid plans, you can obviously completely customize that to be your own URL. You can actually uh, make your own subdomain. Um, in there as well. So there's lots of different features and functions um, and we haven't got time to go into all of them today but I want to show people some of the stuff that this platform can do so that again we're showing you that there's no one platform that's better than another they're just different um, and I just want to give you some things to think about what you might need and what might work for you. So um, you've got this section here called manage learning content so of course this is where the content of your course actually goes. So we're going to click on the courses button um, now, I've got some pretend courses you can see I've been doing, doing lots of demos. <laughs> How to keep a goldfish. This is one of my pretend demos here. Now, all you do is press add a new course. 
um, and it will give you the option to you know choose any kind of templates if you want to pre-sell a course before you've built it i know that you've got your launch before program joanne um you know for people that do like to pre-sell you do have that option there um so there's all these different templates but um, i'm going to pick a blank one and we're going to do how to i don't know let's do launch a course <laughs> let's make up a pretend course here create your course and it will open up our editing area for us to then go in and upload our content. So we're going to assume that you've already come up with what your module is going to be, what are your lessons going to be. Um, and this is where we start building that. So at the moment we have nothing. We're going to press add a chapter. Now chapter is the same as module. So modules are your sections and then within each module you have your lessons. So uh, we're just going to, for the sake of example, just call this module one. Let's move uh, Joanne and I over there a bit. And quite simply, Yes, thank you for a notification. Mind out, there you go. Add a chapter, um, chuck it in. Let's just call this module two and press save. Now, obviously, we can go on and keep doing that for however many modules we have. Then we have the option to add a lesson. Now, lots of different types of lessons. Video lessons is by far, um, in my belief, the most engaging type of content you can have, whether that's a pre recorded, posh, fancy thing you've done in a studio, whether it's a, a download of a live stream or a, or a workshop that you've recorded on Zoom, whatever it is, it's saved as a video. So um, you have the option to press make a video lesson, um, how to XYZ, whatever you want to call it, and you simply drag and drop your video file there. Um, or if you've already uploaded some, there's a pretend one that I've got in here. I'm going to just make a course live in front of you right now, press save. Now, other types of lessons you have, you can make quizzes in here. So you could um, literally press, let's, let's give you a quick example. Um, uh, test your knowledge. Let's say that you've given your students a bunch of, a bunch of video lessons and you want to give them a little, a little quiz. So um, is there one correct answer or is there more than one correct answer to your question? So let's say the question is, um, what color is the sky? Obviously, I suppose it depends where you are, but I'm just going to give you an example. So option number one is blue. That's the correct answer. Option number two is rainbow. And option number three is polka dot. All right, so you get the point, and we're going to press add question. Um, now we can then simply add another question. So there you go, there's question one. Now we can add question two. So again, correct answer. What is the question? Do you like potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Choice number one is yes. Let's pretend that's the correct answer. And uh, no. Um, and then simply add a question. So there we go. I'll show you what this looks like in a minute, by the way. Um, but we're going to just press save on that right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, it requires some more text on choice number three. Oh, there's three choices. That's why. Choice two, bacon. <laughs> oh, it's because it's given me three questions. I don't want to add three questions. I'm going to delete question three and then I'm going to press save. All right. Here we go. Now, what other types of lessons do we have? We have um, surveys. We can add a PDF document. So, um, you know, downloads, maybe you've got a download file, X, Y, Z, whatever you want to call that lesson. Um, do you want to make it downloadable? Yes or no? Some people don't want their students to be able to download stuff that I personally like to. All you simply do then is drag and drop your PDF file in there. So let me see if I've got something random. Oh, there's an invoice. Let's throw it in <laughs> for just for the sake of pretending. Um, so it's going to upload the PDF file there. Now, the cool thing about the PDF file is it will open the PDF in the student's dashboard, in their learning dashboard. So they don't even have to have like Adobe Viewer or anything on their computer installed. It will just open inside it for them. You can add audio files. Let's pretend you've got meditations or something you want people to listen to. You can upload the audio files. You can add download files so any kind of document it could be a jpeg it could be an excel sheet absolutely anything you want people to download um, all there's all kinds of stuff that you can add in here assignments let's say you need your students to be able to submit stuff back to to you for review and feedback. Uh, for obviously, if you've got accredited programs and you need to be able to review the work of your students and pass them in order for them to be able to move on. So there's all these different things in there. Now, I personally stick to a video lesson. And one of the reasons why I love the video lesson so much is that you can also add text and downloads to that video lesson. So if I've got this how to XYZ lesson, blah, 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 I'm gonna add my video. What I can then do is add text. 
so I can, you know, put in whatever I want about this lesson, give them some information. I can add in images, I can add in videos, I can add in audio files, I can make beautiful quotations, I can edit and format the text here just like you would in a Word document, for instance. And I can also, in that video, for instance, I might say, and that is how you do X, Y, Z, download your worksheet um, in, in, in the above button and obviously fill in your worksheet. Um, so I can add that there as well. So I'll just pick something random for the fun of it right now. There's something. Um, there's a download document. Let's pretend that's their worksheet. And give it a second with my amazingly fast internet. Now I'm going to press save and save that lesson. Now, of course, that's all we do now is we go through there and add that in. Now, um, settings is where we can change, um, you know, the name of our course. We can change the URL of our courses. We can add in um, the, the thumbnails and everything that comes up when we share the course and so on. We've got pricing. Um, we can actually create one-off payments. We can create subscriptions where people pay a set price per month. We can even create payment plans. Now, this is a pretend account. So I don't have a payment um, connected to this right now. But if I was, for instance, going to click subscription, it would say here, how much per month do you want to charge? And you just type in the number, done, right? And it automatically deducts that monthly payment from your student's um, bank account. Now, of course, um, then off we go and press publish. We also have um, a landing page builder over here where just drag and drop, you can create the really beautiful sales and landing page for your course as well. Now at the moment we haven't done that, um, but yeah, quite simply we can add a section, we can add in banners, we can add in call to action, checklist, countdown timers, frequently asked questions, images, texts, um, lead capture boxes where they type in their email addresses, videos, the whole shebang, right? All these things can be added in at the click of a button. So if I just show you an example of um, what a course might look like to a student, let's actually just go back and I'll show you the one that we've just built. <laughs> uh, let's go and view it as an enrolled student is, um, I'll move this over here. So this is what the student will see. Now, obviously we have uh, quote declined. There we go. So we've got <laughs> module one. <laughs> um, they click on module one and you've got your video. Now, the cool thing about this is the video plays nice and big auto plays straight away. There's our download lesson and um, there's an invoice, <laughs> which is our document. And then we have the other lesson uh, we put where you've got your video. I put blah, blah, blah text and there's the downloadable worksheet that we pretended to upload just there. <laughs> That's kind of a quick view of what it looks like to the student. Now, behind the scenes, there's lots of other features and functions that this platform has. It's very customizable. It also has open source coding, so you can actually go really advanced if you want to. Um, but you can add in multiple instructors. So if you are co-teaching um, courses like Joanne's been doing, um, you can add in all of the instructor profiles in here, um, their photograph, their bios, and that can then automatically attach to the sales page of that particular course. Um, you can completely customize your theme, your branding, your colors, your logos, everything. Um, when it comes to market and selling, you can create coupons and discount codes for people. Um, you can integrate directly with a huge array of, of um, different types of software that you might need. Like you can directly connect your Stripe and PayPal accounts. If you've got Shopify, there's all kinds of email marketing software that directly connects with this as well. So if you have students enrolling in your courses and you want them to maybe, you know, be thrown into an email sequence that automatically checks in with those students regularly, you can can. Now, what we also have in support our students is communities. So um, yeah, this is something that Thinkific um, only newly added on, um, oh, I believe in 2000, last year or early this year it may have been. Um, and very, very similarly, um, communities is like a Facebook group that allows people to be able to go in and I'll just open up mine. Um, in fact, I may have put it, let me copy the share link and I'll show you what this looks like to a student. So you, t you basically create your community, you can create a community for each different course. So again, only the people who are in each course can actually um, be involved in that particular community. If it's a, you know, like a subscription course, again, they will be removed from that community um, if they uh, unsubscribe. So I'm gonna just press add a new lesson into the little pretend course we just made. And I'm gonna just put in, you know, welcome to the community whatever it's called, we chuck in the little link of the community we just created inside the communities area. And that's all we have to do from this, from this, from this side. I'm gonna press save, and I'm gonna preview this as a student again, just to show you what the community feature looks like. Now, obviously this is pretend, so I don't have anyone in here commenting at the moment. Okay. But 
there's the community. So slowly but surely coming along. So you'll see here, I, put, I uploaded an image, you can call it whatever you want to. Um, and again, you know, we can add in comments, blah, 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 post comment, go back to all posts, we can um, add, a, we can add posts in here, where have they gone? Mm, create a new post. Um, and you can add in images, videos, files, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously everyone in this community can see that and then go and talk to each other. So it has those features as well. And then if we just go back to the dashboard area, supporting your students, um, you also have really, really high level um, reporting functions in here as well. So you can do reports on student progress, which shows you exactly how many lessons or modules, what percentage they've completed of your courses. Um, you can go into your assignments area. So if students have submitted assignments to you, it will show up in the assignments area. You click on view assignment, it will open up that student's assignment for you. And there will be a button that you can press say, Saying approve or rejected and give the option to give feedback to your student as to why it was rejected or approved um, and of course you also have the function to communicate with your students so you can create automated emails that get sent to your students based on a number of actions that they do within the system without even having to have any email marketing software so you can send them automatic welcome emails saying you're welcome to this particular school here's your link here's your password blah 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 you can turn on automatic weekly reminder emails emails, automatic receipts get sent, welcome to particular courses, and um, you can send them emails when they complete particular um, courses. So these will literally send automatically when the system sees that students completed a course. And of course, they are all completely and utterly editable as well. So we can go in here, we can edit this, um, and you know, what, you're now enrolled in X, Y, and Z course. Um, welcome, name, you can edit whatever you like and say whatever you want in here too. So this is all really, really functional. Um, and I believe has everything that you would need if you want to run you know, a proper online school. So the other thing I really like what I've just finished with, because we are running out of time, is the ability to actually create um, categories and bundles so categories let's say you teach lots of different subjects and um, you know if you might have sections on leadership meditation business something else you can actually create a category and then simply add different courses to that category and each category not only can be listed as a drop down on your home page it also can be a completely individual url so you know you might want to send only the leadership category of courses to your leadership clients or your corporate clients but your meditation stuff goes out to your women's group for instance so they're, they're all being kept separately that way as well um, and with bundles very very easy to create as well so let's say you want to offer a discount to people to buy you know more than one of your courses so if one course might only be five hundred dollars if you buy three courses you can have three for i don't know 250 so just to give people an incentive so all you would do is go onto your memberships and bundles and you create a new bundle, what do you want it to be called? And then you just select the courses that you want to be in that bundle and how much that price is. Really, really simple. So there we have it, <laughs> an absolute speed demo. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now so we can come back to the middle. Um, two very different platforms, um, very similar features, but will really benefit very different types of businesses depending on how big you are, what you wanna do, what type of content you have, and who you are as a business owner. Um, I've loved sharing this today. Yeah. Really exciting. Um, so Joanne, if people would like to follow you or contact you, obviously your, your details will be below, but uh, where would you like people to come to be able to connect with you? Um, they could... Uh... Find me on Instagram at J Flynn Black. And um, I'm also, my website is launch B4, the letter B and the number four, uh, launchb4.com. And um, yeah, they can find me there. And I have a link to my Mighty Network um, that uh, they can find there as well. 
absolutely amazing. And uh, if you guys would like um, a free trial on the business plan for Thinkific, I have one for you. Your entire month for free on the Pro Growth Plan, so you can check out all the features totally risk free. That's sarahcordner.com forward slash Thinkific. The link for that will be below. It is an affiliate link. Uh, it charges you no extra if you do decide to go ahead with um, with using Thinkific, but uh, will be very very helpful to me too. You can come along and join my Facebook group, Entrepreneur to Edupreneur, and if you'd like a free course creation starter kit you can go to sarahcorn.com forward slash starter kit and there's a bunch of free tutorials in there to help you turn your idea into a course outline otherwise two amazing platforms for you guys to now chew through and have a think about which one might work for you um, of course please do feel free to reach out to either of us if you've got more questions about the respective networks that we shared with you today um, otherwise from us good luck keep sharing your passion Someone out there is desperately waiting for the knowledge that's locked in your head. So please go and share it with the world.